about words and how your words can manifest your destiny. I, I'm a firm believer in that, that you can't speak certain things to life. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, what happens is though is that I think they're also, well, not think, the, the real world, the real reason the world is as it is, is because it's on a lag. So thus it affords people to be able to say things and then undo them. And this is an interesting process. What, what, what do you mean by the world is on a lag? Well, as I explained before, is that from the first point of the emanation is where it begins. This is beyond the sun, above speed of light. And then from that point, it's sprayed out into whatever receives it first, gets it. That's what they call the, the firmaments or the heavens. So a firmament that's higher in the air will receive the information before a firmament that is lower on the ground. And notice how earth means the dirt. It doesn't mean the air. This planet's not called air. It's called earth. So this means that just because we just uh, just us sheerly accepting that this is earth and we're standing on the ground and we cannot fly it means something that can fly or has another spatial can get information before we get the information as if it's a as a transmission and this is the, it really the foundation of what is called a, a, a magic anyway because it's about attempting to enlist other beings that have the access to these other planes in order for uh, in order uh, to give you information or to cause different things that that would occur on another plane so you see it's it's uh it's one of those un understandings that you have to really gain in order to really scope the entire we call it the dream scope but in order to be able to scope the entire reality so again earth is on uh on this lag <laughs> and so when you say something you can recant it within uh, maybe three or four days and then it'll cancel it out before it actually starts to happen now this actually works more in a negative way than it does a positive for most people because generally they intend to do something amazing and by the next thought they've already convinced themselves not to do it on top of that to get into words the words are backwards so generally what you're saying means opposite to what you're really saying and this is because the words have deeper meanings so opposite only means ignorance it means that you don't understand what you're saying so what happens is is that english language has 26 letters 26 times 2 is 52 52 gives us 52 weeks in a year. It also gives us 52 cards in a deck, which is the modern tarot. So that's what I was saying also about these upgrades to this system. This system, it's not just staying still. It's, um, what do they call that? It's exponentially <laughs> multiplying upon itself. So what you get is, is you get a different geometry, and that's what throws us off. Next lifetime, instead of five and six, which equals 11 being such a big thing, meaning fire and sex, five and six being together is such a big thing in this reality. In the next reality, maybe it's eight and one. And then what happens is, is that all the geometry on that planet is changed. So all of the entities and things look different. But guess what? There's nothing new. So it only takes pulling back off of all of it, which is the perspective. When you come way out of this thing, you'll see one design. When you fly all the way into it, it takes you to go all the way deep under electron microscope before you see that design again. So we're talking about the point before the Big Bang and then the point after the last part of the Big Bang. And so that will give James, you a let full me, experience. Let, let me just interrupt just briefly. Mm -hmm. You said something that really struck a chord with myself. You said how you can speak something and you can recant it within three days. And, and how it resonated with me is, and this is to the listening audience, this, is, this was actually a very much a learning moment for myself and hopefully for you guys. Do you know how many times I talked myself out of greatness? Mm. Right. I was going to do something and, for lack of a better word, punked out, got scared, and right. didn't go for it. And, and, I'm, and I'm getting to the point in my life now where no more punking out. 
I'm I'm going for what I want to go for, and I'm looking to achieve greatness, and I'm speaking it into reality. That just struck a chord with me, brother, but keep going. Oh, I appreciate it, brother. I mean, and also everyone should know, don't get crazy about the words because it could be your worst enemy. There's much more that rise in intention because intention was the first language. That's what the baby is using. The baby intends to go to the kitchen. It doesn't say, I'm going to go to the kitchen. It intends to go to the mother. That's why it doesn't say, it doesn't say I need to go to the mother because it doesn't even have a language. So intention overrides in many cases, but still, you know, be, be watchful of the wor words because they create worlds. And, you know, and it's also a level of power because remember, you know, what we're talking about with language, and I've talked about this, I think, on one show, but the fallen angels accordingly. Now, fallen angel is a, uh, is a being that has had a great power at one point and then doesn't have that power in, their, in the stage in which they fall into. For whatever reason, they choose to do that. That doesn't always mean that the entities are negative, but some of the stories that have been coming out is that there's some negative entities that have come from another stage of consciousness, which was higher, and then back into a lower stage of consciousness. But what they, per what they brought was a language. Now, I believe that personally that language has become a major stumbling block because it causes arguments and problems with communication. And I've seen this in tons of languages. And it's, the reason is because languages, they move like blocks inside of a mind that's really like a curve. So what happens is, is that I believe that there's a point in the Old Testament where the God, apparently, who's a Germanic God, Gud, who's king, who's the Khan, who's Cohen, who's priest, a priest king, Okay, so you understand who you're dealing with, God, the Lord of the earth only. So this being gets pissed off from his high place, which is probably just a castle, right? And decides that those down building the jet, which was basically cycling their energy and actually building the tower inside of their body, would accomplish greater things than even that got good uh, in his aristocratic or, or parliament, because <laughs> that's all the other entities really were and decided to use language as a confusion tool, meaning it was the actual form of communication, uh, the form of confusion that came to these people that were all on one accord was what? Their language got confused. So then it says, it goes on that, then no matter what they said to each other, it was as if they were not saying the same thing and none of them comprehended. And they eventually split up from each other or divided. Right? So this is happening everywhere. This is happening in races of people. This is happening in relationships. This is happening with your children. Because of the language that we're using, we're not sitting down, holding the person, taking deep breaths while you're connected to their other center. We're not doing that. We're trying to talk it out. <laughs> so the talking is only creating more blocks. It's creating more walls or laws. It's the same words, right? So once that starts going on, then you build up all these walls in your life. Now notice how Phi is separated by walls. Phi can be seen in a seashell, by the way. So everyone just go take a seashell. They cut seashell in half, and then you'll see each layer or each section of the seashell is divided by a wall. The wall builds up, and that's what develops the next level of the shell. So this is division, meaning that in the division symbol, you see a straight line in the middle, and then you see a dot on one side indicating a life form or a soul and a dot on another side indicating another life form or a soul. And then this wall in the middle, meaning that division means that there is another version of you that you are not connected to. And even within the symbolism, percentage is the same thing. Percentage is to divide something, right? Based on its yeah. percentage. What do you get? Another dot. If this time it's just on the top left and then another dot on the bottom right and then a line between, meaning to divide, to put up a wall in between this world and the world to come. And so that's why these symbols that even you can go deep, you go into physics and you start looking at the symbols, you'll see the language of the alien. He's very intrepid, meaning that there is another life form here that is claiming to usurp Homo sapien, which is basically Ubermensch, uh, uh, a, a super slave. You see what I mean? So there, there is one that's, mm -hmm. they say evil has found a willing servant. Meaning there's one that is cruel and intrepid. That's what Hitler even said running across a superhuman who was Awaz, who's an extraterrestrial life form, a, a gray. A gray means the moon, no life. It, but what is it? It's the child. The, and if you up on your ancient knowledge, you'll know that the confined one was what was in the box in Egypt in the center point of the pyramid. Let me rewind, because I think there's some Kometans maybe listening. Inside of the great pyramid, the confined one rests, meaning there was a being that they just called the child, Yaldabaoth, born outside of the Pleroma, meaning not born with a mother, that became so destructive for the planet, it was 
basically trapped in time, which is what a pyramid does. It, it has a, vort, a, a apex or a vortex point that creates a zero point. This means there's no space and time in that area. And again, what you're seeing on top in Egypt, right, in Kemet, there's also on the bottom, it's a diamond. So in the center, there was a being there. So that being was removed by the horn one, Moses. Okay, and then the people took upon that God as their God because they were trying to get out of slavery. The Kemetans had progressed to a point where they were enslaving everyone who came into Lower Egypt. Okay, so that's the idea and the birth of the slave gods. So if people want to know why are these Jewish, meaning not really Jews, but kind of like it, following African American, Africans, whatever, around the universe, sucking their blood all the time with their Cohen's, Liar Cohen, Jared Cohen, all these priests running around sucking the blood of the earth, is because they were imprisoned by our people at certain points. And then they took a being that had a common interest with them, the confined one and then bought that being out and that being has been nothing about but destruction just like you see it in, in the Old Testament he play one it'll play one being against the other being because you got to go over there you're the chosen one you need to take the land you're the original boom now conflict I'll go with you I'll go with you means your will <laughs> notice how they had to carry the ark if, they, if something's gonna go with you you don't have to carry it okay so it's deeper metaphors Menelik MLK what meant the horn one it means Moloch, MLK. So you got an entire species that their codes are being rewritten and very few to decipher those codes and then come up with some level of deprogramming. And guess what? You get little, if almost any help. People cannot recognize this from David Icke's speech. They can't recognize this from Jeff Rents and the rest of these people that are out here playing spiritual. But yet, every time they get on the conversation, they have nothing new to say except for what has been dictated to them by the doom and gloom. Oh, this time, this is what we're going to do now. It's going to be a missile. It's going to be a meteor. This is who they killed. This is who they hurt. Man, this is, you got to get into the next stage of things. So I'm already there. And there's many with me that are already there. We're not proclaiming what we also need everyone else to do. It's already been done. It's just about waking up humanity. So notice this. The word bodhisattva, and we're kind of coming to the end here, and you hear a lot of these animals and insects that are in Costa Rica about to get into their nighttime thing. But the reality is a bodhisattva means one who takes a vow to ascend all species. So handle that. Meaning that the ones that were known to hold the bridge, the real Imhotep, was a bridge walker. One who knew how to stay in a 4, 4D and a 3D at the same time. So this is difficult. We'd be wanting to tap out sometimes. So like you said, it's time out for that. I'm going back. Time out for that fear because you could have been above the speed of light. But trust me, it's the gauntlet. Like there's nothing here that equals that you won't be putting in the energy and the effort, but it will give you back what you put in hundredfold because that's the kind of the energy we're dealing with. I'll say this in conclusion so people don't think that I'm, I'm demonizing six and sex. Understand that the level of power that is in reproduction has got us sitting on eight billion souls. Excuse me, one soul. Wow. Um, excuse me, one soul and eight billion spirits. Because if you understand a spirit, the difference between a spirit and a soul is, of course, the spirit is the individual uh, being that is disincarnate that still thinks that it's separate. This is what creates a demon. Uh, 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 well, spirit is a particular group of species. Then you have a demon, and we're here at the end. A demon is a been man, meaning the manhood has been taken away. It has no uh, generative principle. And, and it doesn't have its balance. So understand that these, when a person dies and leaves the earth, if they leave in the stage in this condition, they don't go anywhere. They actually remain here in another vibratory frequency and those frequency be instigators. Meaning they're the ones that are in the environment always whispering in your ear. Meaning their, their voice is, is like a whisper. It's like your thought. But it's not your own thought. It's a thought against your will saying, oh man, you see that person? Oh man, I can't stand away. Oh, I'm tired of this. That's the demon. You see? So this is the thing. Like we have to wake up, bring all this stuff centralized, eat it, 
Because, you know, take your medicine, sometimes it's bitter, and then get into your nine, meaning get into your perpetual mode and get ready to blast off. Because, you know, it's already going on above the speed of light. They're already together. None of the entities are warring anymore because they don't have separate identities. They're living through each other omnisciently. There's no loss, only gain. And I'll explain that. The last thing that people re remember, some people, I, they, they've been falsely told that once you get into this higher stage of consciousness, then you lose all your memories and all your lifestyle and whoever you thought you were. Quite the contrary, my friend. You actually gain the ability to have enough amplification to project yourself through all the entities that you have the power to amplify, amplify through. That's what, again, the power of the subjective plane is, is because everything here is created from it. So it feels everything based on the creations that exist here. That's the position that we want to be. We give now rather than take. And then what's created from what we give, we live through. That's it. Brother, I have to thank you again for coming on air and imparting the wisdom that you do have. And I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I, I have a couple of barriers, a couple of dividers, have a line that is kind of holding me up a little bit, but I'm working on that. I'm, I'm working on trying to mask the self, but brother, I want to thank you again for coming on, and I got to have you come back on maybe in a couple of months when you have a little bit more time, because I really wanted to talk a little bit about sexual magic, because that is one that I think is confounding many relationships and whole nations and communities, to be honest with you. For sure. But brother, Thank you so much for coming on air and doing your thing and let people know how they can correspond with you. Uh, sure, you can actually reach us at astroquest.com. You can get access to all of our, our platforms, which are absolutely free. And then if you want our archive of spiritual information, it's at resistance2010.com. And then uh, we just put up a brand new site that, that's into the deep levels of fringe, especially with utilizing some of the substances available on the planet that are, that are able to put the body into high spin, and that's at realmdynamics.com. Again, that's realmdynamics.com. So that's it. You can find us anywhere on the Internet. <laughs> Very good, brother. I appreciate you tremendously. And you enjoy that nighttime down in Costa Rica. And I'll be in contact with you soon, okay? Okay, Dino. I do appreciate it. Thanks again uh, for having yep. me and hosting the show. And then also to the people that are listening, thanks for, for keep pushing that energy and cycling that energy with others and sharing the information. It's been truly, uh, truly magnificent. I came to Earth. I got the T-shirt. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's one of those things like I'm, I'm in this.